we are opening up tonight just to just to we are starting out tonight with uh, our Christian Education Hour, and we have on the screen June thirteenth, but it's June twenty seventh, which is this week's lesson, June twenty seventh. Um, <clears throat> of course, tonight is the twenty fourth. Still, we haven't we haven't gotten to Sunday yet. But we're just so delighted that you are with us, that you are uh, seeing the hand of God move in each one of our lives in a pure and perfect way. God is still in control, we see, and we're praying for the persons involved in that tragic building collapse. And that is right in Florida, right in Florida with so many people missing, over 102, I just read an update, missing, one confirmed dead. And this, these are the end times. And the reason I go to that 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 idea is because I just knew they were going to say this is happening in Mexico or this was happening in Brazil but they said this is happening in Miami Florida and those buildings are meant to withstand winds of 150 miles an hour. And with that being said, we know the building was 40 years old, but uh, that was in 1980. 1980 was, was not that long ago. So we have to come to some understanding and some, some hum humility air of humility and fear and respect for God, that there are some things going on in our world that we just cannot explain. And, and I've seen buildings collapse in other cities, other nations, but not due to just them just falling down by themselves. We know that this is, this is something that God is doing. And we don't know why or how or when these things will be explained. But we know God has the answer tonight. So we, we express to our God our appeal to him for mercy and grace. We're asking God to have mercy on us because you know our, our houses could fall down as well. There are no guarantees. A sinkhole could come tonight and swallow our homes up. Somebody said that's not possible. I, I see cracks in my pool and uh, I've caught them. The leak detection people will be out here tomorrow to find out why the pool is losing water. That could be a warning sign to me that there's some hole opening up ready to swallow us in. So we need to be aware of what God is doing, what God is saying. We can only, we can only run away from him so long. But God cannot be run away from. God cannot be hidden from. I want to invite you to pray with us. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we come to you in the name of Jesus in this moment of prayer. Lord, we come bowing our head in this moment of solemn, solemn 
respect for the power of God. In this night, tonight, that will not be completely 24 hours after a building is falling down and a hundred people are missing, presumed dead, possibly some alive. We know God is speaking loudly. He's speaking. We need to hear the Lord and what the Lord has to say tonight. Lord, we are hearing your voice. Touch right now. Not just Miami, but all of all of us all over the world that have fallen away, that have not, that are not taking you seriously. We need you, Jesus, like we never needed you before. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we are looking at our lesson tonight, <clears throat> dated for the 27th. If you want to dial in to Zoom, sometimes we have problems streaming to Facebook. If you lose us, we're, we're right there at 6663624438 on Zoom. Tonight's lesson is rescued from doubt. Our summer quarter, which of course we started summer already, summer quarter is goes from August to back to July, back to June. So we'll be starting a new quarter in September. coincides with our school year. Unit one, Jesus teaches about faith. I'm going to read our scripture tonight, which is taken from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. And straightway, I love that word, straightway. That means immediately, all at once. There was no no dilly dally, no, no, no uh, maneuvering. This happened right on purpose. Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go before him unto the other side. While he sent the multitude away, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountains apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone, but the ship was in the midst of the sea. Midst, of course, is the middle, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch, <clears throat> so we know um, the, the days are marked by sundown to sun up in Jewish culture. So they didn't have, they, they had an approximate time. These are approximate times when we talk about sundown to sun up, because we know in the wintertime, the sun goes down earlier. In the summertime, the sun goes down later. It says in the fourth watch. So if we uh, start at 6 a.m., 6 a. Uh, back one, there'll be approximately, I think they say about 3 a.m. Uh, back one watch, that is, <clears throat> of the night. Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer. We love the words of Jesus coming in the midst of our troubled hearts. 
it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to Jesus, to go to Jesus. But when he was the, saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried saying, Lord save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, when the, Jesus corrects you, is never comforting. It says, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshiped him, saying, Oh, of a truth, thou art the son of God. Broke, broaching into our lesson, says it is better to imagine. Okay, we are we are we are we are talking about uh, Christ who we can put our trust in, a Christ who is all sufficient, a Christ, okay? So this is a Christ that is that is, that is enough. The disciples were people I'm sure you knew that. But as them being people, we, we see them sometimes not as, not as, how do I want to say this? We see the disciples many times as a character versus real people. Peter, James, John, Bartholomew, all of those disciples and the others were just like us. They were not any more perfect than you and I. So you have here a disciple bidding Jesus, give, give me the authority Give me the authority to walk out and meet you uh, where you are. The finite is talking to the infinite. But remember, Jesus is in a mortal body. So he too is in a body that is finite. But Jesus himself, the divine, is infinite. which you and I are not infinite, but by grace. We, have, we are in a finite body with an eternal soul. Dr. Odom, the late Dr. Odom put it like this. We go, are going to spend eternity somewhere. So all of us, because our soul is eternal, because it has come from God, the soul is only the, the creation of the individual that is out of the connection of our humanity is made of clay and the pneuma of God coming to be imparted to us. 
we get this from Genesis, the account that when God blew his pneuma into the body, which was made of clay, it, this connection became a living soul. Okay? Reason it was living is because it was connected. Those who are born now, all the babies that are born now are, are being born with dead souls. We are, we are, we are um, shaping in iniquity, conceived in sin. Adam and Eve were the only ones created or born, so to speak, with living souls. Their souls died at the point of the fall of man. And every soul that has entered the earth after Adam and Eve has been in the form of a dead soul, meaning it is not connected with the eternal God. That is the definition of death. That's the definition of death. Separation from God. You say, when my mama died, or when my father died, when my sister died, when my brother died, and I'm completely off the Bible Sunday school lesson. I'm so sorry I'm off the Sunday school lesson. Um, I believe this is part of Sunday school lesson, but this is Bishop Alexander's part of the Sunday school lesson, okay? Uh, <clears throat> we're trying to give you an understanding of, of what qualifies, what qualifies, what qualifies Peter to say, bid me to come unto thee, okay? God, Jesus, is in his humanity. He is 100% God, the son of God. He's 100% man, the son of man. All of this is encapsulated into one being, the one entity called Jesus. We know Christ's Uh, is here in this uh, what we call this depiction. The story is depiction, but this is an accurate true story. So this is a non-fiction story. Okay? This is not Star Wars or uh, the color purple. This is a real live situation. The disciples are afraid, even with the divine Christ on the ship, on, on not on the ship, but coming to the ship. Because when Jesus is apart from us through the partition of our existence, okay? What is the partition of our existence? We see. We see Jesus. Thank you, uh, Sister Angelita. God bless you. Uh, <clears throat> we see this moving of God, moving of God. God is moving. Watch this. That that in our in our in our humanity. What causes fear is there is a partition between Christ and us. We are on earth. Christ is in heaven. We have the spirit of Christ in us. Because the spirit of Christ is in us, watch this now, we don't, we, we are still, we are still, we are still out of touch with him so when he shows up in our situation unexpectedly because that is our mind being focused on the activity 
of trouble. When Jesus comes in as Christ, as the spirit of God, it is a startling situation. There's nowhere else to put that. It is a startling situation. Christ comes in. Christ comes in. We're going through our Sunday school lesson. Those of you who are teaching this lesson understand that we're not looking at depictions of people. We're looking at real people in real threatening situations. Okay? Jesus is coming to bring peace. And he is coming and his and his arrival brings fear. Jesus in part in in the aftermath says, you have little faith. We came across the this charge of having little faith last week in Jesus' teaching on worry in the sixth chapter of Matthew. Jesus is, is indicting humanity. Humanity is indicted every day. Every day we are indicted in our humanity because we are condemned in the flesh. What does the Bible say? Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So as long as we are in our bodies, there will always be a lack of faith. That, 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 that means at our best, our righteousness is as filthy rag. Now we can, how do we overcome how do we overcome the liability of our humanity? We are in, we are then, we are filled with the spirit. The spirit must, the spirit of God must take over us. Which we saw in the depiction of this situation. This is a miracle of walking on the water and it would never have happened if Jesus had not chosen to stay on the mountain and wait till trouble comes and then move toward us through the situation. Look at the trouble we're in. We have hell in our homes, hell on our jobs. And we ask the question, where is Jesus? Mm. The miracle would not have been able to come if, if Jesus had not distanced himself from us to allow us to get in a situation where he had to show up. There's a benefit in Christ showing up. So there must be a benefit to Christ Departing, separating, being absent in, in the way that Christ had not left them or forsaken them. Christ was able to see them from his vantage point, but they were not able to see Christ from their vantage point. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Do y'all see that? You from your humanity cannot see Christ. Hallelujah. But Christ from his divinity can see you. Do you understand that? There's a partition. The partition is your humanity. In your humanity, you are 
you are limited in your access. You ever been somewhere and you didn't have the membership to access everything you wanted and they said, you have membership that has brought you here, but you don't have membership to go everywhere. Our humanity membership only allows us to come in by birth, said flesh, that, that we are born of the water and of the spirit. Nicodemus went to Jesus by night, said, Jesus, um, uh, what must I do to save it? He said, you must be born again. Jesus said, Nicodemus said, how can I be born again? Can I crawl up in my mother's womb a second time? Jesus said, no, you must be born of the water and the spirit. Now, when we're born of the water, there's two connotations. The water comes first out of humanity. The, warm, the, 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 the fetus is grown in an amniotic fluid, which we call water. And we say her water broke first, the water comes, then the baby comes. Now we are born of the spirit from the water of the spirit, we are born from one baptism. We're baptized into the water of the spirit of Christ. We are not saved by liquid H2O. We are saved by spiritual water that comes from God. So this, this event could not have happened unless Jesus had distance himself. Jesus went to the Father in prayer, in prayer, while Christ is working on your behalf. Christ, Christ was praying about his, his, his process on earth to man. We pray to God about our process on earth for God. Our life is for God. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified saying it is a ghost. We don't always recognize Christ in our situation. We have to be very careful because now the understanding is not Christ, but Mother Earth. The understanding is not Christ, but the All Father. And we are being infiltrated on every side by the process, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, of all of these mythological gods and I preached two weeks ago that the mythological gods have foundation in Jehovah because the reason there are so many gods in the, every culture in the world is when they split up from, from the Tower of Babel, they took an understanding of God, but it was confounded by God, needing salvation from God Jesus then comes to earth and dies for man as God and imparts that knowledge to man for man to carry the knowledge of God to every man. We cannot get angry at the Catholic Church for, for amalgamating the truth of God from these cultures into Christianity because we understand that to get them to accept our God, we need to do what Paul did and say, you have here an understanding of the unknown God. Let me tell you who he is. <coughs> So we must take their, their, their finite, their, their inadequate understanding of God. 
and bring Jesus walking to them. Now, fear comes, and I'm way, way, I'm way behind in my lesson. Fear comes at a cost. Fear stays at a cost. Okay, so we cannot accept, we cannot accept the loss of Christ without accepting the presence of fear. Thank you, Lord. So, so the storm rose and the distant Christ that was coming then grew further away. Even then, even when he showed up, the disciples saw him through the partition and they could not identify who he was on purpose. Peter answered him, Lord, if thou, if it is you. Peter was the main one that identified who could see Christ in the midst of the storm. And that's our submission to you today. Can you see Christ? Thank you, Lord. In the midst of the storm, can you see him? Do you try to see him? In the midst of the pain, do you try to acknowledge who he is? In the midst of the hurt, of the neglect, of the sorrow, of all of these things that came to you and you're still holding on to them and they're still obscuring your vision of Christ. You can't see him anymore because of the partition of your flesh. That's why we walk not according to the flesh, but in the spirit. We walk by the spirit, in the spirit, through the spirit. So when in the spirit, we can see the Christ in the midst of the storm. And we understand what Peter then did saying, I'm a safe, hallelujah in the midst of the storm with Christ. As a matter of fact, I'm safer with him out of the boat than without him in the boat. Hmm? Jesus singled out Peter and to be tested, Peter volunteered. Said Peter walked on the water, but the partition started developing again. Why? Because the attention of us is only maximized when we neglect our human situation, our human paradigm, our human limitations, what we don't have, what is causing us pain, the more we focus on the pain, the less we see Jesus. Jesus teaches about faith and doubt. It is here that Jesus teaches about faith. Jesus immediately reached out his hand. Let me show you the scripture that, that we're, we're referring to here or the commentary. We have to understand the commentary said Jesus teaches about faith. And, and right here, Jesus immediately, this is the scripture, reached out as his, his hand and caught Peter, saying to him, at the same time, Jesus is bringing support, he's bringing correction. Now, here's, here's the deal. We're in a bad situation. We're in a time of COVID. We have buildings falling down. We have people shooting random individuals, people shooting babies on the highway. And yet our culture says, Jesus, we need not. 
LGBTQ, uh, money, vaccine, uh, <clears throat> what is it, Trump, anything but Jesus do we need? Then watch this. LGBTQ says we have pride in ourselves that we are what we need. Guess what? Pride cometh before a fall. So Peter's development, the story, uh, we see doubt is the theme that Jesus identified in his encounter between Jesus. Jesus is not only here to rub you on your back. Jesus is here to be a God. Do we understand that? He is Lord. He is not just our, as Donald Parson says, cosmic bellhop. Jesus is not what does the doctor do when you call him? He gives you stuff that's supposed to correct the issue. But we have, we're have we not used to going to a real doctor because a real doctor will eliminate that which is infected. But our modern day doctors just put Band-Aids on the issue. High blood pressure medicine doesn't cure high blood pressure. Don't you know that? Anxiety medicine does not cure anxiety. Arthritis medicine does not cure arthritis. We cannot deny that Peter demonstrated faith by getting out of the boat. Jesus, however, has identified a pattern present in the life of Peter. Peter's faith at this point is immature. Watch this. Watch this. Uh, his faith, what the, but the issue is with me in the text is that I don't have the faith Peter had. I know Peter had little faith, but I must not have any faith because I cannot walk on water. But that's the paradigm Jesus is trying to get us to understand. All you need is a little bit. And the little bit Jesus is, is trying to diagnose is that it's not the amount Jesus is referring to, it's the consistency. We have faith on Monday. We have faith Monday morning. And by nine o'clock, 10 o'clock Monday, our faith is gone. This story is really important on our understanding of Peter. It lays out a pattern that encounters more than once in Peter's development, we have to understand that Jesus is working on us to get us better. Jesus is working on us to get us better. The reason he has us going through what we're going through is to make us better than what we are. We cannot be who he wants us to be until we get in his teaching program. We must be in Jesus' teaching program. Peter, the reason Peter gets a grade card after he takes this test is because he is a disciple. The word disciple means student. So if, if Peter is a student, shouldn't he get a grade card? 
you are you are upset that Peter get Peter gets a grade card at the end of the test. Who are you to judge Jesus? God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. That's when Jesus had to put Peter in his place saying, get thee behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me. You know when Peter <clears throat> tried to correct Jesus, Peter is trying to tell Jesus he does not need to be a sacrificial lamb. One minute, Peter is telling Jesus, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. The next minute, Jesus is being told by Peter, you cannot go to the cross. Peter is always getting a assessment by the divine teacher. Jesus is our teacher. He is our divine teacher. This pattern in Peter's faith reaches its culmination when Jesus and the disciples had just finished the Last Supper, were headed to the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus would be arrested. Jesus shared that all the disciples would desert him that night, but Peter boldly proclaimed, although <clears throat> the other disciples might desert you. I'm not leaving you. Jesus said, Peter, you will not only leave, but you'll deny me. When Peter said he would never desert Jesus, imagine Jesus, Peter never felt bolder in his faith. We can say a lot of stuff and blame it on the Lord, but it's not the Lord until we do what Christ has said. Some, some things that we say we're going to do are not of Christ. They're of us. <clears throat> Taking the lead on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came down and filled believers Peter is the first one. How is Peter the most dynamic one? He went through Jesus's training program. Don't be afraid to let Jesus correct you. This kind of faith does not give away to doubt when challenged is of a different order altogether than mere self confidence. We have to understand the purpose of Christ in our life is to bring us to a place where he can teach us. The disciples call Jesus rabbi. Everything Jesus did in the three years was a teaching experience. That's how we know. That's how we know. Watch me now. Judas is not saved. Jesus did not teach Judas betrayal. The whole three years, Judas was learning from the devil. We must be secure in our dedication to God. I love the bold expression of faith at the end of Habakkuk, though the fig tree does not blossom. Let's read it together. And then we'll let you go because it's already three, it's already four to five minutes. Habakkuk, though the fig tree does not blossom, no fruit is on the vine, though the produce of the olive fails and the, yield, the field yields no food, though the flock 
is cut off from the fold and there is no herb in the stall. No herd, I'm sorry, herd, not herbs, herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exalt in the God of my salvation. God the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of deer. He makes me tread upon the heights. All of the circumstances described would drown the confident feelings of a person without faith. We are given an instruction, faith and hope overcome this world's situation. We've got to, we've got to. We've got to put Christ in his right place as our teacher. Right now we have Christ as the savior. We've got to put him as the teacher. We're not learning anything from him. How can we be saved if Christ is not our, not only teacher, but our examiner? Reason we're supposed to do that examination every month because we ought to hear what Christ is saying through that examination. Every time we take a test in school, we review, we review it with the students. That's what self-examination is. Christ is already examining you in your heart. Are you hearing what he's saying? Then we review the examination ourselves and see how do we do better on the test next time. God bless you. God keep you. This is our prayer. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we pray for... Bishop McLeod, who's on his way down to Miami to be with those families. We know that there are over 100 people, 102 people that might be trapped, might be dead. These are times when we need to hear what God has to say. Help us to hear your voice. You are our examiner. You are our teacher. Bless right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.